So today I'm with Chris. Chris, how old are you? Uh, 59. Chris, how long have you been out here in, lost in Phoenix? Uh, since I've been out of prison. When did you get out? Uh, about two, two years, three months. Two years, three months. What was your stretch? 39 years. Wow. Did you come out to a world you didn't recognize anymore? That's 40 years. Hell yeah. They could have literally put me in a helicopter and dropped me downtown in Phoenix. I wanted to never know where I was at. I could have been in a whole different state. Changed a lot in 40 years, huh? Hell yeah. And uh, you're a native from Gila? From the cradle to the grave. Okay. And uh, so how was your experience? 40 years uh, locked up. What, what, did, what did that do to you? It changed me mentally, you know, and it's either give up or, you know what I mean, stand up and make it work. Yeah. <clears throat> you must have gone in there when you were really young, huh? I went in when I was a minor. So when they give such a long stretch to a minor, must it be like something serious? Yeah. And, uh, these two years that you've been out, what what are what are you experiencing out here? What what's going what's happening out here in the street? It's been rough because I waited a lot of years to come out here and be with my family, and two days before I got released, my sister they found my sister at a bus stop, and she had been dead. You know what I mean? And they didn't realize she was. They thought she was asleep, and nobody asked her if she was alright, and nobody said anything. You know until her body started decomposing and started smelling, and that's when they knew something was wrong. And when I lost my sister. I got one brother, one sister. And then my brother went back to kill his number so he wouldn't have to be on paper. And when he came out, because he was doing heroin and everything else out here, you know what I mean? He thought he could handle the pills, and they found him over there by 16th Street, by the railroad tracks. He had been there for like three weeks, and he was dead too. So, so now it's just me and my mom. So you lost both of your siblings to blues, fentanyl, counterfeit fentanyl pills? Uh, they said my, my sister OD'd uh, methamphetamine. G? Yeah. And where's your mom at? Uh, she lives right downtown. I try to see her at least once a day or, or go every other day and go see her. I just spent the day with her yesterday. We went out there to the res so I could get my travel ID and and uh, update my address to uh, where she's at. Do you still have to report to like a probation officer and stuff? No, I killed my number. <clears throat> You're totally free, huh? Yeah. What are you gonna do with all your freedom? I'm just trying to learn, you know what I mean? How to be associated with other people. like. People out here in the street, I, I can communicate with them, I can talk to them. Other people, I feel like, you know what I mean? I um, kind of like stand away from them and they look at me like, you know what I mean? I'm there to rob them or you know what I mean? And I don't feel comfortable around, I guess you would say normal people, you know? I don't, so I'm trying to work on that so I could, cause I ain't never worked a day in my life. I don't say that, I mean, cause I'm proud of it. You know what I mean? Like I said, I got locked up as a minor and I would love to work, but I don't, I don't know if I can handle being around other people like that. So you're, you didn't get to socialize with people. You didn't get to have a job because you went straight into the system, right. right? At a young age, you didn't learn skills. And so you're coming out of here, you might be a little lost, right? They're a little uh, defensive, yeah. uh, don't trust anybody. Uh, and that's probably something you learn locked up is you can't really trust people around you, right? Because they might do want to harm you. So um, yeah, it's a definitely a challenge. And so the, the state doesn't prepare you. They don't try to give you any type of, type of life skills or something, nothing at all, huh? They just, yeah. here you go. Get out. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they do it for people that are like in a, a lower security yard, but because of my record and everything and things that happened inside prison, 
I was kept locked down most of the time. You know, I did a lot of years in solitary confinement. Why do you think there's so many young people out here? Uh, that's that's the majority of people I'm seeing with these pills are so. Um, yeah, I know. I. It's like I don't know. It's like a disease. You know what I mean? It's like I've never done them. I've never tried them. I've never been tempted to do them. You know and. I get high, but I smoke weed and I smoke G's, you know what I mean, from time to time, and that's it, you know. I don't, I don't do pills, I don't mess with them. What are your plans now? You're out, you're free, uh, your mom lives close, so you get to see her. Uh, what, are you trying to get a job? Are you trying to... I'm trying to get into a sober living home that, uh, I can get into it that'll help me out with that, you know what I mean? Give me some kind of a counseling, you know what I mean? Allow me to interact with people, you know, and how to communicate without coming off like as aggressive or something. Have you ever heard of Native Connections? Yeah, that's where my mom, that's how she got her place. I was on my way there earlier because I got a travel ID now and they can offer me more benefits but they wanted the I actual ID, you know. Okay. So yeah, that'd be a really good start for you. Uh those those they have good programs, uh, good detox, good treatment, so they have a sober living home. Uh get get your information, go there, sign up, see what you need and uh hopefully they can, you know, help yeah, you with those life skills, right? Yeah, that's what I was trying to do. I was also trying to get a phone one of those free phones, but they told me I needed a letter of approval from Access to DES, you know. And so I, I just got to go down there and get that, too. Okay. So it looks like you're almost uh, almost getting set up, yeah. right? You're trying, you're trying to get set up, right? Yeah. I mean, I've been out here. I just had to kind of, like, get it out of my system, you know what I mean? Like, I had to, I mean, even, even though all my family, my, my, my aunts, my uncles, and my, my cousins, they all offered, you know what I mean, for me to go live with them, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to do that. You know, I, I had to come out here, you know, after what happened to my brother and my sister, I stayed out here because I wanted to know, you know what I mean, what, what, what it is that they, you know, they did, you know, and I see the way some of these youngsters are out here, you know what I mean, it just tears up their life, man. It's, they have no idea, you know what I mean, how bad they throw away their life, you know. What I mean? And you speak from experience because yeah. you 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 lost forty years of your life, right? The critical years of your life gone, and so you see these young people out here doing, yeah, doing doing the same thing, and you, right? There's like a little bit of regret yeah. or what? Yeah, it is, you know. And they think because they get arrested and they get released, you know what I mean, or whatever, they got away with it. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't work like that. You know what I mean? The penal system doesn't work like that. What they do is they, they mark you down like, okay, you got caught once, you know what I mean? And then when they do bust you for something, they use all that, you know what I mean? It's a criminal history and they enhance your sentence and before you know it, man, you're doing a whole grip of time. Yeah, I think they're immature, they're they're naive, and they just they're trying to be cool, right? They're trying to impress their friends out yeah. here, but uh, but their friends, you know, when you got out, were your friends out there to receive you, to welcome you out? No, no. My, my friends, all the people I knew are either dead or are in prison. They were in prison with me. Right. What was the first thing you ate when you got out? <clears throat> uh, my mom made me some uh, fried bread and uh, red chili stew. Wow. Tastes good, huh? Yeah. <clears throat> After 40 years? Yeah, that was real good. <clears throat> wow, 40 years. That's that's a long stretch. I think the longest I, I <clears throat> somebody that I've interviewed was 20 years. So you got the record at 40. I just can't imagine that's a long, that's a lifetime, you know? Yeah, it's not something I'm proud of. No, but you know what? Your story can impact somebody else. So for all the young people that are going to watch this, because there's 15 year olds that want to be badasses. They want to be cool. They want to impress people. What would you tell them? They were your, their, when you were their age, right? What would you do again? What, any advice for them? Well, what I did was send me to prison. It wasn't about money. I wasn't robbing nobody. It wasn't about drugs, you know. What happened was, is that, to make a long story short, um, I was on my way to my mom's house to go visit her and as I was getting closer to the house, I see 
the fire department and uh, uh, the Red Cross over there. I was like, yeah, that's over there by my mom. As we get closer, I couldn't believe what I was looking at, you know. My mom had a car parked halfway in her living room. It went through the wall, everything. And I had found out that um, that guy was drinking and my mom had came out and told him to lower his music or either park his car next door wherever he, the people he was visiting, you know. And he got mad, got in his car, backed up, floored it, and ran through the wall. So when I found that out, I waited till everybody left, got a gun, and went after him. And would I do it again? Yes, I would, you know. And it's just, there's just some things I can, you can't, you can't, you know what I mean? You can't let go. And, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna say thank you very much for sharing your story. Thank you for having the courage to, to, to share and let people know that it's not the way, right? This is not the way, right? Yeah. Stay in school, do better, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, I'm gonna give you my card with my number on it so you can call me. If Native Connection doesn't work out, you can call me for a right of treatment or somebody to talk to, okay? Right. Please stay safe, God, uh, God bless, and we'll talk soon. All right.